Producers, how are you guys doing today? In this video, I'll be talking about sample layering and the different things that I look for when layering samples because when you're layering samples, it's not just about stacking things for the sake of just stacking different sounds. You really have to consider what each, what each sound contributes to your overall new sound. There's five different things that I look for when layering samples or when considering different samples and there are different contrasts, so differences between the samples that I look for before I put them together. And hopefully this inspires some of you guys, and if it does, then definitely leave a like and subscribe. So the first thing that I look for is, is I consider the timing of each sample. So for example, I'll have one sample start a little bit before the second one, and then this will create a whole different texture. Um, I think the amateur thing to do is to just stack the samples and just leave them on top of each other like right on the grid but you you can find some interesting new textures just by shifting one of the samples maybe the softer sample just a little bit before and then have the harder one hit a little bit later all right so let's say i am stacking two samples i already have one chosen right here and i'm trying to create a snare uh, let me get a second snare real quick Actually, let me get a clap for this. Okay, so let me get this clap right here. When I'm stacking two samples uh, and I'm doing a time difference, uh, I will take usually the softer sample and bring it a little bit before, and it will sound like this. So that's a little bit too much before. And compare that to this. So when you're actually shifting the time a little bit, you're actually creating room for the second sample and for the first one because they're both having a little bit more space to kind of punch through and leave their own mark on the sound rather than being stacked and playing at the same time, if that makes any sense. And to even further kind of make some space, I'll usually get volume fades and fade out the end of one sample. Uh, the one that's before the other one and that way it has a little bit of texture that's uh, being added but it gets cut out right before uh, the actual main sample hits um, so that's kind of time shifting in a nutshell so that's the first thing that I look for the second thing I look for when I'm looking for samples to layer is I look for a frequency difference so maybe a low sample that has very low frequencies and then a high sample um, that has a crisp texture at the top. This is just obvious like common sense. It's kind of like uh, when you're laying stuff you want to EQ the top of one sample and then EQ the bottom of the other so that they both kind of fit together. Um, and something you don't want to do is choose samples that have the same exact uh, they take up the same frequency range because then they're just clashing in that range. For a frequency difference, usually you can just tell if one sample is lower in frequency than the other. Um, it's just you can tell which ones are more bassy and more have more lows and which ones are higher. I'll get an EQ and I'll look at this one. So this one clearly has a lot of low end down here. And then if I take an EQ and look at the second one, which is right here, this one is not as thick sounding at the bottom and it sounds better up high. So what I'll do, I'll actually cut out the low end from the, from the clap and then maybe uh, actually get rid of some of the highs from the other snare. kind of boost the mids or something. And then when I layer them back together, it's a lot cleaner than without the EQ. So if I take off the EQ, it's not a huge difference, but if you have uh, more trained ears, you can tell that it sounds a lot more crisp, especially if I start pushing these highs on the clap right here. It sounds very clean. 
again without the EQ and with the EQ. The third thing I look for is um, a texture difference between samples. And what this means is um, quite literally like I just look for what each sample sounds like. So if I want a snare that sounds like a drop of water, I can find a sample that is a drop of water and then I can find a snare. And each of them has their own texture and they kind of contribute to the final sample. So next we have texture difference. So I'll look for samples that contribute different things texture wise and they bring you to a different place. Different samples will have different textures. So what I'll do is I'll actually look for, um, okay, so I'll look for some perks, perk samples, so percussion. So that one kind of contributes like a, a hollow kind of um, vocal, kind of, not vocal, but it sounds like a human mouth. So if I add this to our snare, so without it, this is what it's going to sound like. But with it, it sounds like this. It adds that extra texture. And again, we're going to keep in mind the frequency and the timing. So this one has a lot of uh, mid range. So what I'll do is cut the mid-range from the other ones uh, just slightly and kind of let this one shine in the mid-range. Maybe turn down the volume a little bit and maybe do some timing changes. So something like that. And that's how you can start considering different textures and adding it to your layers. The fourth thing that I look for is I look for transient sounds. So sounds that are very sharp. And then I look for sounds that are softer and that kind of function as like a filler. You can use volume to shape different samples so that they fit together. So transients are basically the peaks of a sound and the sharp part of a sound. So when a snare hits, it has a very sharp transient. Um, and when I'm layering sounds, I usually want one sound that's very sharp and the rest to kind of be fillers. So right now, if we listen to this layer of sounds, the sharp one is obviously this one right here. Um, now what I can do is look for another sound, but I'm gonna get a nice kind of, uh, hmm. I think I'm gonna get a water sample or something. I've been talking about water a lot, so let's make this kind of have some water, I guess. All right, so I have this giant uh, library. Okay, so we have this stream flowing. It's a very long, very, very long sample, but what we can do is just get the part that we want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just chop a small part of it and put it in our stack. And what I can do is now get the fades, the volume fades. And if you're in another digital audio workstation, all you have to do is uh, kind of shape the volume the way I'm doing it uh, Have the volume come up slowly and then come back down and stuff like that And actually I think this would sound better if it was pitched up higher it sounds too natural right now Or actually with water it sounds good when it's leading up to the snare so what I'm gonna do is um, Fade it in like this. So obviously now we have a sharp sound and then the water is kind of a soft filler. So that's kind of what I mean by finding the contrast and the transients. 
So something I actually forgot to do was cut out the low end of the water um, in terms of the frequency. So again, you want to keep in mind the other rules. Um, so when you're looking for different textures, some textures are going to have a lower frequency than others. And the water obviously has a lot of low mid range. So what I want to do is cut that out so that we have enough space for the sharp kind of sample to have its low mid range come through. So compare that to this. So obviously it's a lot lower and it sounds a lot thicker, but there is a lot more mud, if that makes any sense. It sounds more like it's clashing. This sounds cleaner. Final tip that I do with samples is I look for panning and stereo contrast. I might take a sample and pan it to the left and then take another one and pan it to the right, have a time difference, and then maybe have one sample in the middle and this will create a stereo effect and it adds to the thickness and the fullness of a sound. Now the final thing that I like to do to top things off when I'm creating like these large stacks of samples and when I'm creating a hybrid kind of sound, and again this doesn't have to apply to just snares or to just drums, this can apply to synths that you're layering, but what I'm talking about next is the stereo. So obviously we have the timing right we have the frequencies kind of separated each sound is in its own dedicated zone so that we have this nice clean combination of samples and the, the final thing I like to do is make even more room by panning things in different directions and it gives it this thick kind of wide full sound so typically I'll get things like the claps and kind of those extra samples and I'll pan those. So for this one, like negative, I don't know, 30. So now it's 30 to the left. Now the clap is in the center, more or less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan it to the right, 30. So now they're kind of contrasting. And now when I layer them, we have this full kind of sound going on. Now with the water, um, I'm going to do just a random stereo trick uh, with simple delay. I can make that stereo by uh, getting a simple delay and then going like this. So now the water is on both sides. So compare that. Wait, let me turn it up to this. It's wider. But now I can layer all of this onto this main snare right here, which I'm going to keep in the center. So it has that nice punch. And it's going to sound like this. Stereo. So that's kind of something that you can do to top everything off and to really make everything sound super crisp in a sample that you're layering. So those were five things that I look for when layering samples. Um, and the final trick I did was the stereo. Cavalier. And I didn't explain it, but basically you can do the same thing by creating a duplicate of the water um, and kind of delaying it a little bit and then panning one to the right and one to the left. And basically when you add stereo, it kind of tops everything off and gives everything space and fullness. But hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed or have your own layering strategies, then let me know in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and give me other suggestions if you want to see something or want an explanation. And I'll see you guys next time.